Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you here. It is Tuesday, first week of Lent, and honored to have you with us. Um, we have an interesting day today uh, in that the Hebrew Scriptures reading is actually uh, Joseph being first abused by his brothers and sold into slavery. And we're also commemorating a former slave, Frederick Douglass. So I thought I would show this etching of the uh, traders buying Joseph from his brothers, um, which was oddly enough a way that they were able his brother Judah was able to save his life. Lots to unpack in that. But, uh, well, you know, one of the things that is I always uh, teach people as we study the Bible is every book has a, literally and figuratively a beginning, a middle, and an end. But at, at the same time, there's also an arc of importance. And we begin with creation in Genesis and we end with Israel and Egypt having uh, the world literally having been saved by Joseph. So, um, a lot of, of import to unpack in the same way that we have a lot to unpack in the import of the life of Frederick Douglass. He was a remarkable figure. Like the segue, Jacqueline? <laughs> we, uh, we, we, had, we had him a remarkable figure, born uh, in Maryland as a slave. Uh, he was uh, truly a remarkable figure in his day. All the things that could happen in chattel slavery to a human being happened to him. He was separated from his family. He was first sold and then loaned um, to different people to uh, to as a servant. Uh, during a time in his early life when he was a boy, uh, he was uh, loaned to the old family. This was a seminal moment in his life in the early 19th century and was uh, basically given the opportunity to pursue learning and uh, and truly to experience uh, some erudition. He also was the first time he was able to sleep on sheets in a bed. He was, uh, I'm going to jump back for a second. He was uh, the son of a black female slave and a white owner father and always kind of wore that biracial reality um, as a part of his journey and owned it, uh, which became complicating in his later life. We have an amazing amount of documentation of his existence because he actually wrote three autobiographies, along with as well being uh, a leader in the public eye, an orator. So he uh, much of what he said was published, um, much of what he wrote, both in terms of his own uh, his own offerings, but also what was wrote about him was prodigious. Uh, he traveled widely during his adulthood. So after the old family uh, saw to his education, he returned uh, to the original family that he was owned by um, and by them was labeled impertinent and was sold or slash loaned to a notorious uh, dirt farmer, white dirt farmer who was known for breaking slaves and uh, beat him regularly, sometimes often enough that the wounds from the previous beating didn't have time to heal until uh, he was beaten again, until he eventually, around the age of 16, rose up, fought back, and uh, with that, the owner did not beat him again. However, he became resolved to uh, run away and eventually at a young age was able to board a train. There is some uh, argument on which depot in Baltimore that he boarded the train from. Reminder that he lived the balance of his enslaved life in Maryland, uh, as well as having to travel through Delaware, which was also a slave state in that time in order to get to the north and uh, and to find freedom. Eventually, he settled in the area of Massachusetts and uh, also in Rochester, New York, living life in both areas. Married a woman who was a freed Black woman um, and was married to her for quite a while. Um, they raised a family together. Then uh, she passed away. He then married a, married a white woman. Um, and lived first in Rochester and then in New Bedford, Massachusetts. This was a controversial thing, as you can imagine, in those days. That wasn't done. Um, and uh, he said that uh, when, when challenged on it, he said that he married uh, a woman who looked like his mother when he was a younger man and then one who looked like his father when he was a later man. So it all balanced out. Uh, truly a fierce uh, opponent of slavery and a proponent of the freedom and emancipation and liberation of black human beings, um, bodies and souls and minds. Uh, he was an advocate for education at an early age. Um, and he lived as proof 
um, that a black man could write with erudition and with insight and intelligence. Often when that was attributed to his white father, he would say, no, I got my intelligence from my black mother. The only thing I got from my white father was my gender, if you will. Um, traveled to uh, Ireland, where he was impressed by the poverty and social enslavement of the underclasses of the Irish, and also uh, was able to visit in England one of the last surviving emancipators uh, who was uh, part of the the, um, the outlawing of slavery in Britain. So I think it was a man named Clark, if I remember correctly. And uh, it was actually in England that he was able to raise the funds to purchase his freedom. So those abolitionists were able to help him secure his freedom. And if you want to add to that, Bill, I kind of covered, I hope, all of it. Oh, and also converted to Methodism later in life. He did not want to be any part of the white man's church, but he found a God that would love him as a friend in Methodism. So... Um, only that, you know, he was one of the two big newspaper publishers, along with Garrison in the abolition movement, Garrison Liberator and his North Star. Um, and he was very popular on the lecture circuit, um, especially in New England. And one of the things that he would do is have other runaway slaves uh, walking up and down the aisles with their shirts off to demonstrate their um demonstrate the scars of their whippings and they would collect money in that way and it was it was kind of a human visual aid and really brought the idea home and his he had a, a big problem politically um once the 15th amendment was ratified and gave black folks black males the right to vote uh the women's suffrage movement basically broke with him and you know they the two never supported each other and that was a trend that continued on into the 60s, um, women's rights movement and the civil rights movement, you know, used to have a great deal of crossover before the Civil War, after the Civil War, not so much, because when the 15th Amendment was ratified, the women said, well, hey, what about us? And he said, well, what about you? And basically, that's where they broke. And yeah. then women get the vote in 1920, and the two groups rarely cross over anymore after the late 20s. And uh, I chose a photo from his later years. This is uh, in the late 1870s. Um, he also, and I'm glad you raised this, Bill, he also really was committed to photographic documentation. So that aspect of being very close, in this case, to the photographer, Matthew Brady and others, yep. he made sure there was documentary evidence, visual documentary evidence of the depredations of slavery. Um, and you raise the issue of uh, his breaking with the women's suffragist and women's liberation movements of the 19th century. It was Elizabeth Cady Stanton herself, actually, that uh, yep. was an advocate for him in his second marriage. And uh, and truly, you know, it, it was a complicating world and a complicating life. All right, we're ready for morning prayer. We remember Frederick Douglass and all those who strive for racial and social justice. And uh, here we go. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us that thumbs up. Follow us on Facebook. And it's always an honor and a joy to have you with us. Welcome home to a holy Lent at St. Peter's. Rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. For God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth of the evil. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. 
Amen. Please join me for the antiphon and invitatory in unison. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is the Lord, our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their hearts. For they have not known my ways unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. This morning we have Psalm 45. Please join me and we'll read responsibly by full verse. My heart overflows with a goodly theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. You are the, most, the most handsome of men. Grace is, poured Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore God, Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one, in your glory and majesty. In your majesty. Your majesty, ride on victoriously. For the cause of, cause truth. of truth. And to defend the right. Let your right hand you teach you your dread deeds. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The people fall under you. Your throne, O throne, God. O God, endures forever and ever. Your royal scepter. Your scepter is a scepter of equity. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Your robes are all fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. Cassia. From ivory palaces. Ivory palaces, stringed instruments make you glad. Daughters of kings are among your ladies of honor. At your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Hear, O daughter, consider and incline, incline your ear. Get your people. Your people's And the king will desire your beauty, since he is your lord, bow to him. The people of Tyre will seek your favor with gifts. The richest of the people with all kinds of wealth. The princess is decked in her chamber with gold woven robes. In many colored robes, she has led to the king. Behind her, the virgins, her companions follow. With joy and gladness, they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. The place of ancestors, you, O king, shall have sons. You will make them princes in all the earth. I will cause your name to be celebrated in all generations. Therefore, peoples will praise you forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. And the man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Please tell me, where are they pasturing the flock? The man said, they have gone away, for I have heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They, say from, they saw him from a distance, and before he came near them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, 
he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty, and there was no water in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle is the second song of Isaiah together. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts, and let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion, and to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made the foolish, made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demanded signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. God is the source of your life in Christ, Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in that order, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is Song to the Lamb, together. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them, Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we, and work we worship thy name ever world okay. without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us. As our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never, never be, be confounded. confounded. Grant to your people, Lord, grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only true God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may always do what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who hast made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and didst send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near, grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee, bring the nations into thy fold, pour out thy spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your intercessions and thanksgivings. Prayers this morning for Jesse and for her recovering from pneumonia, and also for her family as they grapple with where she is safest and happiest in her living situation. Amen. Amen. Ask for your help when we go to Model Congress and that you look over the students and make sure they have a great experience and nobody gets lost. Amen. Amen. Pray for Lynn and for Andy who are struggling with cancer. And give thanks for all those who are discovering a new sense of center, both in Christ and in the church, this Lenten tide. In the Anglican Secular Prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Cashel, Ferns, and Osori, Church of Ireland. In the Diocesan Secular Prayer, we pray for the members and ministry of the Convention Officers. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercy, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. We appreciate your presence. A reminder, we do not have evening prayer tonight. I am in class for my doctor of ministry, but we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for morning prayer on our quiet day at St. Peter's with Bible study, Alice's cup being open, the community supper being cooked, the Kelly's cupboard being open in the evening, noonday Eucharist, as well as five o'clock evening prayer. You know, just another quiet day around the block. For now, dear friends, take care and God bless. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Give us that thumbs up. Bye now.